Yo. Let me turn up my microphone. Microphone, my speakers. Test. Test. Te Whoa, why is my voice so deep? What the fuck? <laughs> it's uh, also um, coming through really clearly, really loud. Okay, that's really weird. Okay, okay then. Okay, it's a little back to uh, it's a little back to it's a little back to normal. So the very, the very, um, I think the first thing that we were going to do is make it so that the ball stops bouncing at some point in the simplest way possible. And then we were going to look into uh, how you might, and by simplest, I guess I mean the, the, the way that's nearest to the code that we currently have. Uh huh. And then um, make sure that works, and then try making the code more um, fancy using classes and stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So here. Oh, it stopped. It stopped. It stopped. It stopped. Awesome. Uh, let me see if mine is. Oh, uh, hold on. I got a. Um. Okay. Uh. Let me see what mine does. I don't remember. <laughs> Might take me a little bit. Well, it's uh, bouncing nicely. Mm -hmm. I think it could be a little more like um more real but it's, it, it looks pretty good yeah
Like this initial bounce is way too slow. Bouncy. Yeah. All right, this is taking too long. I'm going to go to the code and see if I can determine from the code whether or not it will stop bouncing. <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't see any code in here that stops it from bouncing. Oh yeah, and now it's going a lot. Okay, oh wait, did it stop? Oh, it stopped. Oh, <laughs> okay. So I guess I do have code in here. Where, what? Oh, here it is. Okay, cool, yeah. So if it's, if the, the speed is less than, if the magnitude of the speed is less than one, then it stops moving and positions it at the right spot and then if it's stopped moving and it's in the right position then it uh well if it's not at the bottom and not moving in other words if it's anywhere else if it's still moving then we update the speed with the gravity. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I guess uh, I guess we actually already did this. Um, maybe we just didn't test it and see whether or not it really worked um, but I guess I guess this is done so I'll mark that as done um, and then the next let's see so we made sure that it actually works and then uh, something that we could do is convert the ball into a class so that we don't have to do ball underscore everywhere uh, we would instead do d ball dot and then various things um, and another thing we could do is instead of making having all of this code for the ball uh, like here, the check for whether or not the ball has stopped moving. Um, whether or not the ball is at rest on the ground. Instead of having that code out here, all of the code for the ball could be collected together. And it looks like I still have the ball class. I'm just not using it right now. Um, so let me... I'm gonna erase this, and then we can start over with uh, how a ball class, like creating a ball class from scratch. Um, and I can talk you through it. Uh, so the first part of creating a class is, at least in the text, the very first thing you need to do is, oh, you already have that stuff typed out, okay. Um, well, mm -hmm. do you want to use that or do you want to like go through what it's, what would, how you would create that if you didn't already have it? Let's go through it. Okay. So the very first thing you need to do for creating a class is type out the word class. Um, and then the name of the class and we can call it ball. Uh, classes are almost always capitalized. Um, the especially classes that you make are almost always going to be capitalized. There are some built-in classes. Actually, maybe they've cleaned those up, but um, that were 
that have been around since before that convention, I think is why they, they don't follow that convention. Um, anyway, uh, so class ball. And then um, we need to think about, okay, what are the different fields that go into a ball? Um, so uh, we need to create a... Uh, an init method. So to create a method, we say, how do you create a method? Yeah, def. And then instead of init, you do under under init under under. And for now, we'll say that it has one argument self. Then we can set um, a bunch of fields of the ball. So ball, in practice, has a center x and y, a velocity y, and a radius. And then what else? Center x, y, velocity, velocity lower edge so the lower edge here we're calculating uh, where the lower edge is um, but we calculate it based on other fields that we already have so rather than having another field for the lower edge we should have a method that does this calculation so we can always just call that method yeah, I don't think we need prior ball lower edge anymore, though. Uh, uh, I think we, yeah, that's what we, we could probably... Yeah, what were you saying? But yeah, that's what uh, we we did last time, I think. One of the things. I see. I s I'm still using it to determine whether or not we've hit the bottom. Uh, I think what we could do oh, is... Oh, it's right here. Never mind, I do have it. it we, we, could, we could determine that the ball has hit the bottom by... Oh, no, 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 I do have it. I do have it. Uh, I was... Okay. I, I see I see that you have it. Um Well, okay, so let's let's go back and start putting in the fields. We we have some work pending. Um so if we want to make a velocity y field, uh do you know like what how you might do that inside of the init method? What is the what do you type out? Uh I think if I remember from what I deleted, yeah, is it self, self dot whatever? Yeah, self dot whatever. Uh, and then you have to do a little bit more than that. Self dot whatever something something. Uh, not parentheses. Um, so that's a uh, maybe that's a C plus plus thing that you're thinking about um but you can do equals something uh and in this case we'll do velocity y um and then here we could actually put in a velocity y equals zero and now when we create a ball, we can pass in the initial velocity y, or we could leave it blank, in which case it'll be set to zero. Hmm. Okay, and then uh, the other fields. What are they? Let's fill them in. Oh, here. They're all collected right here. So, oh, it looks like... Uh, Yeah, 
the initial ball velocity y was 200. Did we have it going down initially? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we could set the default to 200 and then self dot center x is equal to instead of setting it to 300 like hard coding it to 300 we can here do center x equals 300 and then here do center x so this center x right here whatever value is filled in for this goes here and if no value is supplied, then it will be 300. Um, and this is the code that will get executed when we do something like this. Ball equals ball. And then maybe we put stuff here. Okay. All right. Um, so center X. Let's keep going. What's, what's uh, next? Uh, center Y. Yep. Okay. radius um already Now we can update the code to make use of this class. Oh, um, yeah, let's, um, let's do that. So, um, here we're, we're basically creating a ball, um, now that we have this class, we can create a an instance of the ball class here. Here. And that's that's how you do that. Um, we could fill in the if we wanted to give it different initial values for all these things, we could do that right here. Um, I think it might also make sense to, in addition to all of these fields, have the acceleration uh, be part of the ball class. Um, I'll put that as a to-do. Because uh, what we could do is here, where we're updating, this whole thing could instead be replaced by um, here we change the acceleration to zero. And then up here where we update the ball by the velocity, um, here if we, if we also set the acceleration to zero, then the velocity wouldn't change anymore. And if the velocity is also zero, then the position won't change anymore. And if we position it in the right spot, then the position will be correct. So that's uh, that would make it so that we wouldn't need to do this check. We could just do update the velocity according to the acceleration, update the position according to the velocity, and we wouldn't need a special check to see whether or not it's bouncing anymore. 
it would just work because acceleration is now zero. Um, yeah, so uh, that's something we can think about later. Uh, now that we've created this ball, let's go through this code and basically duplicate it um, where we replace or uh, use the ball object instead of the uh, all of the different ball underscore variables. Um, yeah, so we could, yeah, I guess we could just put, uh, oops, put ball dot everywhere. And what was the other op other option? Or well, I was, we uh, I was gonna literally duplicate it. So like take this section, duplicate it, and then put ball dot everywhere. And then we could, uh, I guess we would have to duplicate everything before we can check. I was thinking that maybe we could do this incrementally, but I think we have to do it everywhere before we can check whether or not it works. Um, let's see, could we do something incrementally? Uh, whoops. Oh yeah, that's another thing. Um, the we have a few different places where we have a dot x and a dot y. Um, or sorry, an underscore x and an underscore y. Uh, and that's another place where we could use um, a class. Okay, so prior ball lower edge is equal to prior ball center plus pr prior ball radius. So I think we're going to have to make a prior field and change this to be ball prior lower edge. Um, and... Yeah, I'm not exactly sure how we're going to do this part. Uh, oops. But something like this, uh, so that ball is at the beginning. Um, and then this whole thing, rather than the code being here, the, ball, the code could be in the ball class. but we'll get to that. For now, let's just make lower edge, prior lower edge, prior center Y, and we already have center Y. Let's make those things be part of the ball class. Do 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 do. So I was watching this um video on writing closure script, and they have um this obviously pre-recorded thing where they say now we're gonna change the code to do this, and then <laughs> and then they play um typing sounds. But it like doesn't sync up at all with the the characters that are actually coming out, and it's obviously the same typing sound clip every time. Mm. It's um, it's kind of funny. Um, That's, yeah. It kind of reminds me of um. There's some some places where uh, some phone thingies where they put you on hold and they're like, oh, let me look that up, and then they play like typey sounds. <laughs> It's like, yeah. okay, I would really rather you just play, like, I don't know. I, I, I would really prefer not hearing fake typing sounds that I know are fake. Somehow that just enrages me. <laughs> yeah. 
and then they get back on the line and they're like, one moment, please. One more moment, please. <laughs> like, oh, wow, I feel like I'm talking to a real human now. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm just even more reminded that I'm not talking to a real human. <laughs> um, okay, so we needed... Uh, what was it? Ball, prior, lower edge. Um, yeah, let's just make these be fields. What is What actually is going to be the n thing nearest to the code that we currently have? Um... Shoot. I'm not sure. Uh, Alright, let's just go the route um, that we'll make methods to calculate the... lower edge <coughs> Excuse me. Um let's see ball prior lower edge <coughs> Excuse me again I think the ball prior lower edge really is going to have to be a field of the ball. Um, that Because we need to remember it from one frame to the next. Um, so the prior... So instead of... Uh, so ball center Y, we will also need a ball prior center Y. And we can just make the initial ball prior center Y be the same as the ball center Y. All right. So let's make a method now for calculating the current center Y. Yeah, def, and then center... Or sorry, not center. Uh, what what did we call it? Lower edge. Lower edge. That takes in a self parameter. All methods inside of a class will have at least one parameter, and uh, that will be called self. It actually doesn't need to be. You could call it this <laughs> and mess around with other people who make Python. Um, you could call it whatever you want. You you don't have to call it self, but and it would be extremely weird not to. Okay, um, so how do we calculate where the lower edge is using the existing fields? Uh, well, we use the ball center Y and ball radius. Yeah. Um, so what would the calculation be here? Um, use ball center Y and ball radius. Uh, ball dot center, center E, center Y. Plus ball dot radius. And because we are in a method of the class, rather than referring to ball, we refer to it as self. Self. And uh, because we're in Python, we need to say return. If we're, 
if we actually want this to be the value of calling this method. Okay, so now when we uh, later on in the code where we call ball dot or we have the the code ball dot lower edge here instead of doing this uh, we we actually don't need this this specific line anymore oh we could have copied this up there uh, but here we can make this into a method call so I'm going to take out that line actually I'll comment it out so now we can just run this method and it will do this calculation for us. Mm. Cool. And then the prior lower edge, we want to do this calculation. Um, yeah, so let's go make a method called prior lower edge that does this calculation. Yep. Then and change this to self 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 but then here this method and this field have the same name now um So, oh, actually, lower edge, we can just do return. And then that should work. Um, so now we don't need this. And instead, here, we can change this into a method call. So we don't need this because this calculation is done inside of this method. So now we can call that method. Um, and let's see here. So if we've crossed the edge of the window, print out that we hit the bottom. I guess we don't, well, yeah, we, we can still do that. Uh, and then here we need to, oops, um, ball dot lower edge minus equals, So, how can we do this calculation in the class? <coughs> Shoot, this is actually quite a large change that uh, before we can really test any of it which is not great. Um, so we need some way of updating prior center Y every time the ball bounces. Um, so let's start bringing <coughs> some of this code into the class as well. Uh, so this code <clears throat> is determining um, 
is the ball still? And is the ball at the bottom of the screen? So then this whole thing taken together is what? If the ball is still and at the bottom of the screen, Mm -hmm. Wait, what? Um, so, <laughs> um, uh, we need to, well, we, in order to make this code work, I think we're going to have to bring a lot of the code that's currently out here, make it be part of this class. And then down here, we, call different methods just like we already have done for prior lower edge and lower edge we did that here we made methods and then rather than having this code down here we call those methods mm. but um, I think in order to get this stuff to work, we're going to need to bring a lot of the, like, this whole section of code inside the class um, and this section of code inside the class, too. <laughs> so I'm starting with this section of the code to uh, or no, if we're trying to do the thing, the least amount of change until we can a actually test something um what is actually going to hang us up? Uh, here, ball lower edge is no longer uh, a field. So we can do that. Uh, oh, but here, we're trying to assign to ball lower edge. And... How can we do that? And then we want to use whatever that is right here. So we could just make this part be uh, a value that we remember for now, just so that we can test it. Um, so we'll make this be a variable that's not actually part of the class. And it'll be confusingly named the same thing as the method that is part of the class, but only so that we can get to the point where we can actually test something. Um, ball. I think actually maybe the rest of this stuff should be okay. Um, ah. Ball prior center y is equal to ball dot center y. Yeah, this this part should actually work exactly as it is too. Okay, so yeah, maybe maybe we didn't need to make a huge change to get this part to work. Uh, let's try running it and see what happens. Um, You got a cold? Yeah. Oh, nope. I got a I got an error there. Ball lower edge is not defined. Um Uh, let's see what line is that? 72 Ball lower edge. Oh. Oh. Uh. So we're using it on the left-hand side and the right-hand side of this expression. Um, ball dot lower edge minus. Okay, so ball dot lower edge. When we're reading the actual lower edge of the ball, and then we're storing the result of this whole calculation into this local variable for now. 
and then we use that local variable to calculate or to update the ball center y and the ball velocity. Yeah, uh, let's give that a shot. I think that might work. Nope, still doesn't work. Oh, I didn't save. Um, classic mistake. Oh, nope. <laughs> that didn't work. It uh, flew off the bottom of the screen. For me, I'm getting this error saying pygame.react object has no attribute attribute velocity y. Okay, uh, let's go look at your code. What line number? 52. So this here. Um, so ball dot velocity y. Uh, can you have, can you make it so that you can see the error side by side with the code? Okay. Um, game dot rect. So has no attribute velocity y. Uh, oh, somehow I missed this dot right here. Uh, so that's for you. That's this code here. So. That sounds like it, ball is somehow a pi game dot rect. Uh, not sure how that would happen though. Um, let's let's go look at where does ball get its oh yeah line seventy four for you. You have ball equals pi game dot draw circle. But you, you don't want to say ball equals that. You want to say just pygame.draw. Um, I didn't know that that would return. So that returns a rectangle. I guess it returns like what got updated or like what area of the screen was updated. That's probably what that rectangle is. Anyway, try it now. Excuse me. And then I will try mine as well. Okay, cool. Ball lower edge is not defined. Cool. Um, let me try mine and see what error I get. Bounce. Nope. <laughs> okay. It just went through the bottom of the screen for me. Um, yeah. Didn't you say to just leave? Yeah, so that yeah. area I changed <clears throat> to look like uh, this. Yeah, ball to lower edge was ball. Like ball on the low edge. Oh, what? So, ball, ball lower edge equals ball dot lower edge, not ball lower edge minus. Oh. Okay. Um, but even so, uh, mine's not working, so I expect yours won't work either. Um, so let's try it. Go ahead and try running. Whoa. Oh, whoops. Uh, oh, well, look at that. Yours worked. Okay, so I must have missed one of the ball dots or something. Ball underscore. No? Um, huh. Okay. Well, that's cool that yours works. 
<laughs> uh, I wonder if it'll stop when it stops when it uh should, when it's low enough. Um, I'm also curious where do where is it that where does our code differ? So you have the code in this order. That shouldn't shouldn't matter. Um, I have no idea what this was about. Oh, I think I this is from the pendulum code. Okay. Um, if not ball velocity, y is equal to zero, and ball center y is screen size, ball radius. Velocity y plus equals gravity. I don't know why this extra space got inserted there. Yeah, it did stop. It did stop. That's awesome. <laughs> uh -huh. That's also a little confusing. Where does our code differ? Ball prior. Okay, uh, one thing that I didn't do, yeah, I didn't change this down here for event here. I forgot to change the ball dot. Is oh. That that oh, yeah. And then... Ball... Uh... I think, wait. Now I'm confused. Okay, so it, it bounces. Um. So ball prior center Y. Let's see. Where does ball prior center Y actually get used? Oh. It doesn't. Well, I, mine is using prior ball center Y. Let's see if I use that somewhere else. Yeah, so, so I actually just. Center, yeah. Prior ball center Y is set equal to 300 up here, and then I use it down here. Huh. Let's see if, if I do the dot, if it also doesn't work. So prior dot doesn't exist. It, oh, no. whoops. Um, oh, no, mine still works. Except it goes a little higher. Interesting. <laughs> it went a little higher than usual. That is interesting. Um. Well, okay. So, uh, I guess we can make a to-do for next time. Um. Oh, we're not quite at the five-minute mark. So... Maybe we can move some of this code into the class as a method. Mine currently works and it stops bouncing. Um, like it currently bounces correctly and it stops bouncing at some point. So that's great.
Um, let's see if we can move this code inside the class. So here, ball velocity y is equal to zero. I'm going to say that that is checking whether the ball is still. So def is ball still self. And it's just going to return self dot velocity y is zero. And then here, we can change this to a call to if it ball is still. Oh, we don't need the word ball in here because it's part of the ball class. So, of course, <laughs> it's part of the ball class. Uh, so now we can say if not ball dot is still and, and then this calculation. So... How, uh, go ahead and do the same thing that I just did for this part. So I just moved this calculation into a method, and then I called the method here. Go ahead and move this part into a method, and then, yeah, ball dot at bottom is a good name. Def at bottom self. And then return I just lost where I what the heck um here. So ball dot at bottom. And then this will be self. Self. And then we could actually do one more level where we make this calculation be part of the ball class. Um, what would you call this calculation? Ball is still and is at the bottom. Uh, Oh no. Um, there isn't like, I'm not like looking for a specific answer. It's just uh, like, if you were talking to somebody else, what would you? Without making it literally, is still and at bottom. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess you could. Uh, you could call the method is still and at bottom, um, <laughs> and then the the calculation would be self dot is still and self dot is uh self dot at bottom um yeah you uh that you could do that um i would like given the context in which we're making this calculation um i could see calling it stopped bouncing mm. um but that really only makes sense in this specific context because later on we could update the code so that like the ball rolls for example and then it would also this would the same code would detect whether the ball has stopped rolling um, so then the name stopped bouncing would no longer make sense or we'd have to like duplicate the code um, so I'm not really sure what the best name would be, but um, yeah, we can go with ball dot stopped bouncing. Um, this has the benefit that it is shorter than is still and at bottom. Um, 
Uh, that's funny that you named that you were thinking that because I was that's literally I was thinking the same thing like is still and at bottom yeah we could we could call it that <laughs> uh, or no uh, stopped bouncing self and then return that um. Uh, and then, so, next time, we'll start here. So, we have, so we're in the middle of doing this. Uh, so, in progress, um, so we've calculated, we've done this calculation, uh, we could start next time with this code. So, uh, start next time here in So this um, seems like this could be a method of the class that's like update velocity, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, and then this is another method of the class, update uh position and but yeah uh, that's where we can start next time all right cool uh, see you next time all right, bye. Sounds good. Thank you. bye yeah you're welcome